It began in silence, a silence so deep that it pressed against the edges of perception itself. Somewhere in the cold void between the southern tip of South America and the edge of the Antarctic Peninsula, the planet shifted. At first there was only a subtle pulse detected on instruments half a world away, a faint shudder that scientists almost missed. Then the Earth's crust gave way, and the seafloor of the Drake Passage convulsed in an event that would alter our understanding of the planet's architecture. The earthquake struck with a magnitude of 7.6, its energy bursting from a shallow fault about ten kilometres, roughly six miles, beneath the seabed. That may not sound deep, but in geological terms it is dangerously close to the surface, where the crust behaves less like a slow-flowing solid and more like a brittle shell waiting to snap. When it did, it unleashed power equivalent to tens of millions of tons of TNT, the kind of force capable of changing not just landscapes, but the very geometry of tectonic boundaries. What made this event exceptional was its location. The Drake Passage is a place of converging giants, the point where the Antarctic Plate brushes past the Scotia Plate and the immense South American Plate. These boundaries usually shift with graceful slowness, creeping a few centimetres, a mere inch or two per year. Yet that night the quiet equilibrium broke. Instruments from the United States to Japan registered the shock waves rippling through the mantle, racing at more than five kilometers, three miles, per second. Across the Southern Ocean, buoys bobbed erratically, detecting long undulations that moved not as simple waves, but as deep surges through the entire water column. Even ice shelves far to the south trembled, and the radar satellites orbiting above recorded minute deformations in the surface of the Earth, barely a few millimetres, fractions of an inch, but unmistakably real. The first analyses suggested strike-slip faulting, a horizontal tearing motion where two slabs of the crust slide past each other like enormous grinding gears. But there was something different about this rupture. Instead of following one known fault line, it seemed to twist through several, joining fractures that had never before moved in concert. It was as if hidden cracks beneath the ocean had found each other after centuries of isolation, linking to form a single massive wound across the seabed. For decades, the Drake Passage had been considered a kind of hinge between continents, a pressure-release valve for the immense strain building between the spreading Pacific and shrinking Atlantic domains. Yet this quake hinted at something more profound, a slow reorganization of forces beneath the crust, a rearrangement of the deep tectonic script that governs our planet's outer shell. The tremor lasted nearly one full minute, an eternity for the ocean floor. In that brief span, pressure built up over hundreds of years, discharged in one violent sigh. Sonar readings taken afterward suggested that segments of the seafloor may have displaced laterally by up to two metres, about six and a half feet. Such movement beneath so narrow and critical a corridor carries enormous implications. To visualize the scale of energy involved, imagine every building in an entire metropolis like Buenos Aires collapsing at once and the energy of that collapse channeled into a single fault line under the sea. The crust cracked, water roared through the gaps, and deep sediment layers shifted like curtains of sand. For a few moments the bottom of the world shook as though trying to breathe. Long after the main shock subsided, instruments continued to detect tremors, a series of harmonic aftershocks that resonated through the ocean basin like echoes in a cathedral. These vibrations, barely perceptible to human senses, hinted 
that the crust was still settling, still finding a new balance after its sudden rearrangement. From the surface, nothing appeared different. The icy winds of the southern ocean still howled across the waves, and the grey light of dawn still glimmered on the horizon. But beneath those waters lay a changed world. Seismic maps revealed subtle shifts in the alignment of fault traces, and new patterns of micro-tremors began to cluster in regions previously quiet. Something deep and unseen was continuing to move. When scientists converted the energy release into measurable terms, the numbers were staggering. Nearly 300 trillion joules, enough to power every home on Earth for several minutes. Yet, despite the enormity of that figure, this was not merely an explosion of force. It was a conversation between slabs of rock miles thick, a dialogue in pressure and friction carried on for millennia and suddenly expressed in one terrible motion. The Drake Passage, long regarded as a cold and passive void, had spoken, and the world was listening. The region's complex geology has always been overshadowed by its remoteness. Beneath the water, the seafloor drops steeply to more than 4,000 metres, about 13,000 feet, then rises into ridges that trace the scars of long-vanished rifts. Those ridges, formed millions of years ago when the continents drifted apart, are now reawakening under stresses transmitted from the deep mantle. Subsurface imaging has revealed patches of anomalously warm rock, pockets of molten material slowly percolating upward from hundreds of kilometres, hundreds of miles below. Normally, these upwellings remain trapped, unable to breach the thick Antarctic crust. But when stress builds, they act like lubricants, weakening the fault zones and making rupture inevitable. This latest quake may have been the planet's way of relieving that pent-up tension. Yet the strangeness of the event goes beyond ordinary tectonics. Some analysts noticed peculiar secondary waves travelling at speeds inconsistent with standard crustal composition. Such anomalies could indicate that the quake propagated through a zone of mixed density, perhaps an ancient plate fragment long buried under the Antarctic margin. If true, it suggests the region's geological architecture is even more intricate than previously imagined, perhaps concealing lost microplates that still drift unseen beneath the oceanic crust. The Drake Passage is more than a boundary. It is a hinge upon which climates and oceans turn. The Antarctic Circumpolar Current, the most powerful ocean current on Earth, flows unimpeded around the continent here, regulating global temperature and nutrient flow. Any shift in the topography of this channel, even a few metres, a few feet, could alter that current speed and direction, subtly influencing weather patterns thousands of kilometres away. The quake's after-effects might already be rippling through that vast watery engine. As the seismographs continued to record the rhythmic murmurs of the aftershocks, it became evident that this was not an isolated event. It was part of a pattern, a sequence of deep adjustments echoing through the South Atlantic and Antarctic boundary zones. Pressure was migrating, redistributing itself, preparing perhaps for future breaks yet to come. For now, the data remain fragmentary like shards of a much larger story still buried beneath ice and abyss. But one thing is certain. The Drake Passage, once thought to be merely a frozen corridor between continents, has revealed itself as a living fault, restless and potent. The quake was both message and warning, a reminder that even at the bottom of the world, the earth is never still. Was this the first tremor of a new tectonic rearrangement? 
Could we be witnessing the embryonic stage of a boundary that, over millions of years, will grow into a rift dividing oceans? Or was it simply another spasm in the planet's eternal cycle of strain and release? These are questions without immediate answers, but their implications are vast. For the moment, the world watches and listens. The satellites circle, the seismographs hum, and the deep sensors whisper their coded rhythms from miles beneath the sea. Something has shifted at the edge of the world, and it may take generations to understand what the Earth is trying to say. Days after the magnitude, 7.6 quake shook the Drake Passage. The aftershocks refused to fade. Instruments placed across the South Atlantic still trembled with faint oscillations, each one like an echo returning from an unseen chamber deep within the earth. What made these signals strange was not their persistence, but their pattern. They were too organized, arriving in rhythmic bursts as if the crust itself were breathing in and out. At first glance, these could have been normal aftershocks. But as data came in from the seafloor arrays, a different image began to emerge. The tremors were migrating, not randomly, but steadily southward, tracing a narrow corridor under the seabed that did not exist on any current geological map. The alignment stretched for more than 150 kilometres, nearly 93 miles, linking the sites of the August and October earthquakes like points along a buried fault line. It was as if the ocean floor itself were sketching out a new scar across the planet. Beneath the waves, at depths reaching 4,000 metres, about 13,000 feet, the seafloor of the Drake Passage is a patchwork of ridges, trenches and fracture zones. Many of these features have lain dormant since the ancient supercontinent Gondwana split apart millions of years ago. But this new activity suggested that the deep crust beneath the Antarctic plate was awakening in ways no one anticipated. The seismic patterns hinted at a structure cutting diagonally across existing plate geometry, something not defined by known boundaries, but by a force carving its own path through the lithosphere. Models of crustal stress began to show a strange signature. Instead of dispersing evenly after the quake, the stress fields were concentrating along a narrow strip running northwest to southeast, about the same orientation as the inferred fault. That directional focus suggested one unsettling possibility. The Drake Passage might be birthing a new fault system altogether, a nascent tectonic boundary forming under the relentless pressure of global plate motion. Such processes are not rare in geological time, but they unfold over millions of years. Yet here the signs were emerging within months. The August quake, measured at magnitude 7.5, had already hinted at instability. Then came the October event, even stronger and at nearly the same depth, around 10 kilometres or 6 miles. Between them lay a chain of foreshocks ranging from magnitude 4.6 to 5.7, each one spaced almost evenly apart, like stepping stones, marking the boundary of something larger beneath. If this is indeed a forming fault, it could represent a fundamental reorganisation of stress between the Antarctic and Scotia plates. The Antarctic plate, vast and thick, moves slowly northwest at roughly one to two centimetres per year, about half an inch. The Scotia plate, by contrast, slides eastward. Their subtle friction has long been balanced by smaller connecting faults but the recent quakes imply that the strain may have overwhelmed those ancient linkages, forcing the crust to create a new pathway for motion, a fresh fracture slicing through rock that has remained untouched for eons. The geological consequences of such a formation are profound. When new faults emerge, they do not simply open once and vanish. 
They evolve, branching and deepening with each subsequent quake, sometimes giving birth to entire rift systems. In rare cases, these rifts can one day become new oceanic basins, separating land masses as the Atlantic once split from Africa and the Americas. Though that process takes tens of millions of years, every grand divide begins with a single line of weakness, perhaps one very much like what is now stirring beneath the Drake Passage. Seafloor mapping missions launched after the quake revealed subtle but measurable topographic changes. Some regions appeared uplifted by as much as 50 centimetres, about one and a half feet, while adjacent zones sank by nearly equal amounts. These shifts may seem small, but in tectonic terms they are extraordinary, suggesting that the crust was flexing rather than simply sliding. That flexure could be the beginning of fault segmentation, where the Earth's outer shell rearranges itself to accommodate a new geometry of motion. Even the water above responded. Oceanographic readings detected unusual microcurrents, slow vortices spiralling upward from depths where circulation is normally stable. These movements might have been triggered by changes in the seafloor slope or by sudden bursts of heat from friction along the fault. Either way, they served as subtle evidence that the quake had altered more than rock. It had disturbed the very engine that drives the Southern Ocean's powerful circulation. If the passage's contours have changed, even slightly, the Antarctic circumpolar current, the mightiest on Earth, could shift in strength or trajectory. That, in turn, could modify how heat and nutrients move between the Atlantic, Pacific and Indian Oceans. Such a change, though imperceptible now, might echo across climates for decades. The Drake Passage is not merely a gap between continents, it is the heartbeat of planetary circulation. A tremor there reverberates through every ocean basin. Meanwhile, the aftershocks continued in diminishing frequency but increasing depth, a sign that the rupture was propagating downward. The crust appeared to be adjusting, stabilizing itself layer by layer. But deep beneath that calm, the stress lines continued to migrate, hinting that the fault was expanding. Some satellite gravimetric data even suggested mass redistribution, a subtle thinning of the crust along the inferred line, as if molten material were beginning to intrude into the void. If so, that intrusion could mark the earliest stage of rifting, a phenomenon where the planet begins to pull itself apart from within. For now, this remains only a whisper beneath the waves, a hidden fracture in the making. But nature has a way of revealing its intentions slowly, through tremors, heat, and the restless shifting of tides. As the data continues to pour in, one truth becomes impossible to ignore. The Drake Passage, once dismissed as a quiet connector between continental giants, has become a crucible of transformation. The Earth is reorganizing itself beneath those frozen waters, carving new lines of motion that may redefine the map of tomorrow. And so, the story of the quake is not one of destruction, but of creation. What began as a single violent motion may, in the distant future, give rise to a new boundary, a new oceanic structure, or even the seed of a future continent's drift. The Drake Passage has opened a conversation between the tectonic plates, and it is speaking in the language of earthquakes. The planet shifts, the ocean listens, and the silent architecture of the Earth continues its eternal rearrangement. Somewhere beneath the roaring winds and steel-grey waters, a new fault line may be forming, an invisible fracture that will shape the planet's fate for eons to come. 
If you found this exploration of Earth's restless depths intriguing, don't forget to like, share and subscribe for more stories uncovering the hidden forces that move our world, and tap that hype icon to help this discovery reach more curious minds across the planet.